Hello. Let's review our grade 11 trigonometry, which we learned in functions, right? This is for advanced functions of grade 12. Now, let's start with our right angle triangle. Okay. So, I hope you remember these things. Let's make a right angle triangle. Here it is. Right? And we will say that the angle here is theta. This side we'll call it opposite side. This is adjacent. This is hypotenuse. And that's the 90 degrees right angle triangle. Now once we know about this triangle, you can find what is sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. And what are these sine, cosine, and tan? They are primary trigonometric ratios. Okay, so help me. Now here, if I say sine theta, so what is sine theta equals to? Sine theta is equals to opposite over hypotenuse, correct? Okay, how do you know it? Okay, so we also learned a short form to remember this. So let me write down that short form for you. I hope that reminds you of uh, uh, what this sine theta, cosine theta and tan theta is, right? So let me write this as like this. We will use sine S is opposite over hypotenuse, okay? And uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? These are all ratios, right? These are basic trigonometric ratios. And tan is opposite over adjacent. So it is so called to a. So that's how we do. And now you can write down what is sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent. Got it. <clears throat> this is one thing you learned, right? Second thing what you learned is there are four quadrants, correct? And how do you label these quadrants? This is our quadrant 1. This is quadrant 2. This is quadrant 3. And this is quadrant 4. And in this quadrant, we learned a rule which tells us which trigonometric ratio is positive in which quadrant. Do you remember that rule? Okay. <coughs> the rule is cast rule. C A S T, but C starts from quadrant four. C A S and T. So all are positive in quadrant one. Only sine is positive in quadrant two. Tan is positive in quadrant three, and cos is positive in quadrant four. Correct? Yes. Let me take you further. We also learned that in our coordinate system. If we have a point P, let's say this is my point P, with coordinates X and Y, and <coughs> then what is going to be my cos theta, sine theta, and tan theta in terms of X and Y? So we can make a triangle here also. Correct? So that is our right angle triangle. Correct? Now what is x? x is this, right? And y is the height. If this is theta, then we can say y is opposite to theta and x is adjacent side, right? Let's say this hypotenuse is h. So how much is hypotenuse here? Hypotenuse is a square plus b square square root, right? So you can find h, correct? Now. So h is equals to square root of, everything is positive here, right? x square plus y square square root. That's h, correct? Now, in this quadrant, let's write what sine theta is. If a point x, y is given, in that case, our sine theta equals to, opposite is y, y over h. And cos is? x over h and tan is 
y over x. Is it okay? Right. Now, remember one thing. If h is 1, if h is 1, right? Let's say it is a unit circle, right? We somehow have this as 1, right? In that case, what will be sine? Sine will be y. Do you see that y value? Y value will be sine. Correct? And the x value will be cos. In general, when h is not 1 but h, then what is y equals to? y equals to h sine theta. x is equal to h cos theta. So I can write this coordinate in a different form. And that is called polar coordinate. What is it called? Polar so let me write here polar chord. Let me write here itself. Polar coordinate. And in polar coordinate, how will I write P S? I'll write P S X is cos theta. Oh, X is cos theta. So let me write this as uh, H cos theta. Let me raise it. Use different pen. So P will be H cos theta and y will be h sine theta h sine theta correct so in polar coordinates x and y are actually h cos theta and h sine theta where h is x square plus y square square root okay so you learn this also right now in general you also learn that normally we are dealing with degrees and uh, if we make an angle, then this is our initial arm, right? And that's the terminating one, right? So as we move clockwise, theta goes positive. Is that okay? So, oh, sorry, anti-clockwise. If it is anti-clockwise, then theta is positive. So anti-clockwise is positive direction for us. Is that okay? If I say minus 30 degrees, minus 30 degrees will be going clockwise from here. Plus 30 degrees will be going anti-clockwise, okay? And the angles are, if you start from here, let's say we are here initially, and then we start like this, then initially this angle is 0 degrees, and this is like 90 degrees, and this is 180 degrees, and this is 270 degrees, correct? And this one is back to 360 degrees. So one full circle is 360 degrees for us, correct? So we learned all this, correct? Now, we also learned some special triangles. I hope you remember those. Special triangles are very important. Now, <clears throat> let's make use of our special triangles and then make our table of values, okay? Okay, so we'll have, we'll make a table of zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Okay. <clears throat> now, so what we are trying to do here is that for these degrees, 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, we are trying to find the value of sine theta. This is my theta angle, okay? for basic trigonometric ratios, which are sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. Correct? Now, I find that some students get confused about zero degree. What is zero degree? <clears throat> okay. Zero degrees, think like this. This is a coordinate system, right? And this is my initial position. And I'm going to increase, but I don't really increase much. I'm just like kind of a bit. So a bit angle means kind of close to zero, okay? So think like this. This is like zero degrees. Imagine. <clears throat> then in this case, our adjacent side and hypotenuse are overlapping, right? If it is zero really, then how much is adjacent side equals to? Adjacent side is zero. Uh, sorry. Adjacent side and hypotenuse are same, correct? Is that okay? And uh, how about the height? Height is zero. Correct? We are at a point here on the x-axis itself. So the point at, on the x-axis will be what? 
will we say x and 0 is it okay the point here that will give me 0 degrees I haven't really gone up right so the height is y values 0 and what is my hypotenuse hypotenuse is 0 square plus x square square root so my hypotenuse is also x and my edges inside is also x and the height is 0 okay think this as your 0 degree triangle okay this is also a standard triangle for 0 degrees my sign will be sign is opposite over hypotenuse so opposite is 0 hypotenuse is x 0 over x will be 0 over x will be equals to 0 is it okay how about cosine for cosine function x over x so it should be 1 and how about tan tan will be 0 over x which is opposite over edges which is 0 over x so that will be also equals to 0 is it okay correct now we'll jump to 45 degrees first so in 45 degrees what kind of triangle do you have so let's draw 45 degrees triangle so in 45 degrees what happens is that we have a triangle here that is 45 degrees right so the x value is same as y value x and y they are same both are x Let's assume that we have a x value as, a, or we can assume standard triangles as 1 and 1, okay. In that case, 1 square plus 1 square is 2, and therefore square root is square root 2. So, in a 45 degrees, these two sides are equal, right? This is 90. If it is 90 and this is 45, this has to be 45, right? They are equal. Since they are equal, their opposite sides will also be equal. It is an isosceles triangle, right? So in general, the coordinate here will be x and x, okay? y value is equal to x value, correct? Now, so let's take standard special triangle. The special triangle has 1, 1 and square root 2. In that case, sine is opposite over square hypotenuse. So it is 1 over square root 2. Cos is also 1 over square root 2. How about tan? 1 over 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. Is it okay? Yeah. Now, let's get back to 30 and 60 degrees. I will make one triangle for both 30 and 60 degrees. And I will make a big one. And I will do it on this side. Let's say my big triangle is kind of like this. Let's say this is an equilateral triangle. And in my equilateral triangle, Every angle is uh, 60 degrees, right? Let's say this is 60 degrees. This is also 60 degrees. And this is also 60 degrees. Obviously, 180 degrees, so 60. All sides are equal, correct? Let's say the side is 2 units long. And then I drop a perpendicular from here. So this will be equal to this, right? Because it's an equilateral triangle. And so this angle will be 30 degrees. Is that okay? Now, since this will divide the base into two equal parts, so this is 2, the whole side was 2, so this half will be just 1. And how much will be the height? Height will be 2 square minus 1 square square root, so it is square root 3. So that's my triangle. Now if I look from this side, it becomes 60 degrees triangle. Do you see that? Sin 60 will be square root 3 over 2. And if I look from that side, it becomes 30 degrees. Sine 30 will be 1 over 2. Do you understand? So I'll use this triangle and fill in for 30 and 60 degrees. So for 30 degrees, sine 30, I'm looking from here, right? Opposite is 1 and hypotenuse is 2. So it is 1 over 2. Cos 30 is adjacent is square root 3 over 2. And tan 30 is? Opposite is 1 over square root 3. Now let's go to 60 degrees. In 60 degrees, we have to see from this side. Do you understand? Opposite is square root 3. So it becomes square root 3 over 2. Hypotenuse 2, right? Adjacent is 1, 60. For cos 60, okay? 1 over 2. 
and for tan it is square root 3 over 1 so I can write this as square root 3 is it okay so we got 60 and 30 degrees from our special triangle now let's talk about 90 degrees 90 degree also creates a lot of confusion let's see how so this is our thing and we want to make a 90 degrees triangle so 90 basically means that you start from here, let's say you start from here and you are going up, up, up like this, right? As you are approaching 90 degrees, let me draw one triangle here first, okay, kind of. Try to understand. As I am moving up, up like this, let's say it was initially this value and I moved up, up, what is happening? A positive value is increasing, do you see? And it is approaching the hypotenuse. And adjacent value, it is decreasing. Earlier when we started it was this much, right? Let's say this was my earlier study, right? Initial position. As I went up, it becomes lesser, lesser, even lesser. But when I will be at 90 degrees, A will be approximately zero, right? So a point here, what is the going to be the coordinate here? It is going to be zero and some y value, right? Let's say y value is one. In that case, my opposite is also one. Is that okay? So that's my special triangle, just a straight line here adjacent becomes 0. So, sine is 1 over 1 because my hypotenuse is 1 and my height is approaching hypotenuse or opposite side is at approaching 1. So, it is 1 over 1 which is 1. For cos, this angle diminishes. Earlier it was this when 0, right? Comes closer, 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 it becomes 0. So, it is 0 over anything should be 0, right? And how about tan? tan is opposite over adjacent. So, opposite is 1, 1 over 0, which is like 1 over 0, which does not exist, right? So, we have a vertical asymptote for tan and it does not exist for 90 degrees. Do you see that? I hope you understand what I am trying to say here. So, this particular page, in short, gives you things which we will soon be using, right? The only difference here now will be, we talked about degrees, right? Now here, in advanced functions, we will start introducing you to radials. And so, it will not be just degrees, 0 to 360, we will talk about radials. And in radians, the angle goes like 0 to, this is pi, and then back to 2 pi. And this one is pi by 2. So this is 1 pi by 2, 2 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2. Okay. So, we will talk about units which are radians, right? And we will do kind of same things which you did initially uh, at grade 11 functions, right? Using degrees. Once you become conversant with radians, then we will move forward. You should note that in calculus, any time there is a trigonometric problem, you have to consider only radians, okay? If not specified, even in advanced functions, unit for theta, the angle, will always be radians. So, get used to radians fast. This is your review of grade 11. And now, you should read the videos or see the videos on radians and its application. Okay, I hope you understand. Thank you. And as we proceed forward, we will introduce or review the other concepts of trigonometry which you learn. Okay. One more thing I can add here, and that is the relation between tan, sine, and cos. And that is, you know what? Tan theta is how much? Sine theta over cos theta, right? You can check from here. 0 divided by 1, 0. Half divided by this. So, you can check your values. Are they right or not? Using the relation, tan theta equals to sine theta divided by cos theta. Okay? Let's move forward. Thank you.